Hi, uh, welcome to today's devotional podcast with Dr. Jacob Al. And, uh, after much prayer and listening to godly counsel, I have come to the conclusion that I will serve the body of Christ better if I move uh, our naked and not ashamed series, Sexual Intimacy in Christian Marriage, if it is moved from the social media into uh, our website, uh, AuthenticLifeIdentity.com, uh, and rather work at uh, serving the church uh, on individual personal basis, uh, rather than putting this information out there. And so uh, it makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, the the series will still be available, but it will be restricted on our website, authentic www.authenticlife.com. You click on resources, you see sexual intimacy in Christian marriages, and you continue to have the videos on that website. We are creating that website and building it up and the, the, the videos will be there. And, and, and so if you do need this information, uh, you can uh, uh, contact me directly through Facebook inbox and we can send you the link or simply go to uh, www.authenticlifeidentity.com. Uh, we think we will serve the body of Christ better if this is developed into a counseling ministry where people, the Church of Christ, will have the opportunity to call in or email me and ask for specific information on specific issues that they have on sexual intimacy. Uh, and so I, I feel... Uh, 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 peace in my heart that it will be a more effective way of, of, of helping the body of Christ uh, solve this issue uh, that is sort of uh, uh, causing issues in, 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 in Christian marriages. So, so please um, uh, do understand that the series will continue, but the videos will be placed on our website, www dot authentic life dot com uh you click on resources and then click on uh, christian marriage sexual intimacy and you will find the videos there and uh you can also get the audio uh files in the uh devotional podcast audio uh place uh, but it, it, it just makes a whole lot of sense uh, because of the sensitive nature of the information. Uh, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to give people the privacy of calling in uh, or sending me an email uh, or, 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 or an inbox message requesting for this information. Then uh, we could give them the link uh, directing them to the website where uh, they can get it. Now, for obviously our international clients as well, you can you can you can go to www.authenticlifeidentity.com uh, www uh, and you can still have access uh, to those uh, videos. Uh, the series of uh, of uh, naked and not ashamed. Uh, will continue, but it, it will continue on our website and not on social media. So for social media, we are coming back to our daily devotional podcast where we took a verse each day and dissected it and gave the exegesis, the scriptural exegesis uh, uh, that, that, uh, that was, that the scripture was all about. Uh, we would we will continue that, uh, and then uh, obviously always let listeners understand that a, the the naked and not ashamed series has been moved on to uh, 
uh, website and you can always have access uh, to the uh, transcripts uh, above all. And I think that is even you have access to both the transcripts and the video and audio recordings at our website at www.authenticliveidentity.com. So the topic for our devotional today is all you have is given to you by God. All you have is given to you by the Lord. And our text for today is taken from John 3, 27, and I'm reading from the NLT. John 3, 27, reading from the NLT. John replied, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. That was the reply of John. Uh, and we're going to look at the details of, of, of this uh, verse and try to put it in context and ex Jesus and, 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 and look at the practical applications of, of, of this verse to our everyday life. So John the Baptist knew who uh, he was as a man of God, and he knew what God had called him to do in, <coughs> in life. So um, it, it is important as John that each and every one of us know the divine mandate for our lives. See, once you understand the divine mandate for your life, you will not worry about all the other things that are out there, all the opportunities that you think you could have taken. You would not mind. You will be solely focused on what God is asking you to do with your life on F here. And, and, and it may be challenging and people may not have an idea what the, their godly mandate on F here is. And, and we will talk a little about that. But John knew that uh, he was not the Messiah. That he said it from the beginning. He knew that he was only sent by God to prepare the way for the Messiah. And, and, and for some of us, you see, uh, we need to understand uh, that the, our calling on earth here may just be that we will be John the Baptist. The John the Baptist anointing may be so powerfully be on you that you have the skills to prepare the grounds always for somebody else to come and take over and do a, a more greater work that is in a more public forum than you. And, and it, it, when you understand your calling in this area, you will not try to usurp the power of your boss, okay, until your timing comes. And we can talk about this in the area of being an assistant pastor or an associate pastor or a staff pastor working under a lead pastor. A, a, a lot of times the problems come when you, the associate pastor or the assistant pastor, uh, does not understand the seasons and the timings of the Lord with regards to your calling. If And, and for some associate and assistant pastors, you may never get to be a lead pastor. And you just have to accept that. If God has clearly told you that you are always going to be an assistant pastor, an associate pastor, helping and propelling others' ministry to grow and always be under a lead pastor, you have to gladly accept that and execute your jobs flawlessly. If you don't, you are bound to cause confusion and you will be missing the mandate of God on your life, the calling of the Lord on your life, and you will never have the peace of God in your heart. So it, it, it is important. John was settled in his mind and his heart that he was not the Messiah. So even when the situation came where there was so much tension and uh, his disciples sort of were urging him to do something about the situation because now all the people were running over to Jesus Christ 
and deserting his ministry, uh, it, it was a good recipe for jealousy and envy to come in that John could have used to discredit or speak derogatorily to the ministry of Jesus. But John always reminded his disciples that, look, I have told you that I am not the Messiah. And I've told you that he who will come after me, I am not even qualified to unless his sandals. Okay, so he understood his calling and his position in this regard. And so he didn't need to have any friction when Jesus' ministry was beginning to blossom. And that is the type of anointing that the Church of Jesus Christ lacks a lot these days. A, a, a lot of times, people begin to serve under a lead pastor, and especially when they are blessed with some type of giftings, maybe in the area of healing or in the area of prophecy, any of the nine spiritual gifts, and they begin to function in that area, and they begin to feel that. They are better than the lead pastor, and they do things to usurp the powers of the lead pastor. It brings confusion, and the Lord will not honor anybody who tries to usurp the powers of the lead pastor for himself or his own glory. It was always a recipe for disaster. When you understand that, look, my calling is to be an underservant of the lead pastor and to cause the ministry to grow, that is what I accept my calling to be. You will have so much peace and you will make a lot of impact in ministry than you will ever think of. So this was a clear understanding that John had. So and he says that it is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the best man is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. That's John 3, 29. That was what John was saying. So since by analogy, he was just the best man, he accepted his position and was happy to do what he was called to do in life. John also knew that Jesus was as a man of God, Jesus, John also knew who Jesus was as a man of God. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah. He said, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting on him. John 1, 32. This was the sign God promised him he would send in order to identify the Messiah. So when John actually saw it, he knew Jesus was the true Messiah. He knew that Jesus was the chosen one of God. John 1, 34. So it was clear. For some of us, we know the signs that, hey, this person that I'm working under, he is the lead pastor. God has called him as a lead pastor, and I am serving as an associate pastor or an assistant pastor under him. And once we gain this knowledge and we do our best to serve the lead pastor, serve God under this lead pastor, we are not serving the lead pastor. Don't let us forget that. Because when you think that you are serving the lead pastor, then you allow room for these frustrations and uh, annex, uh, unfulfilled expectations to harm you if they do come. And they will come in every human institution. Those undue expectations will come. And, and so... If you understand that the mandate of God for my life, maybe for this period of time, is to serve as a faithful under servant of the lead pastor, and you do that faithfully, believe me, the Lord will reward you and bless you. John had this understanding. 
And so he will not even allow the comments of his own disciples, which seem to instigate him to do something about what was happening. Their numbers was dwindling. So he should do something about that. John refused to get into a competitive mode with Jesus Christ. He refused. He rejected that. And he understood his calling and his position. Problem we have with young ministers today is when they fail to understand their position and their calling, and obviously the timing of God for their ministries, and the little anointing that they have, they feel they are better than the lead pastor. And they begin to do things to undermine the position of the lead pastor. Now, it, it doesn't have need to be in a church setting. This could easily also apply, be applicable in the job setting. In the corporate world, now I have worked in, in the corporate world for a, a number of years in executive positions, and I know exactly what I'm talking of. You have people who intentionally try to undermine your position. And, not, I, I, and, I, and I will say this, unfortunately, in, in the context of America, where the color of the skin is not supposed to be an issue, there had been times that I had subordinates who undermined my position as the leader just because of the color of my skin. And I could sense that. And I could see it. But you see, as a leader, I always looked at their potential for the company in a, broad, in a broader perspective. And so I will try my best to harness their potential. And when they realized that I wasn't in any way in competition with them, I was even rooting for their promotion and their growth. Guess what? Their competitive nature and pull him down syndrome vanishes. And that is exactly what John was doing here. John understood that his position was to prepare the way for the Messiah. And once the Messiah came, he had to be in the background. He didn't want to do anything to outshine Jesus. And that was a, a powerful, powerful lesson on secession that we can learn from the way John handed over the notoriety and the popularity to Jesus when his time came. He went into the, into the underground and allowed Jesus' ministry to blossom. And I believe strongly that the reason why John was arrested at the time that he was was because his ministry was winding up to an end. And believe me, if John's ministry wasn't over, there would have been something. Something would have been done getting him out of the prison of Herod. Now, Herod, in his wickedness, was used to end his life. But guess what? Herod didn't end John's ministry. John's ministry had already come to an end. And so the way he left the F and left the scene was not cut short by Herod. It was his time. The wickedness of Herod worked in such a way that it turned into the favor of God. Being human beings, it was bound to have issues with John's disciples. If John wasn't taken out of the scene, John's disciples were going to continue to wallow in this competitive spirit, and there would have been confusion all over the place. So John's ministry was up, and he had to leave the sin. And that is exactly what happened. And so sometimes we need to understand our calling and seasons. When our time is not up to get to the top there, and we maneuver by hook or crook and get to the top, our falling will be great. Our ministry will disintegrate as never before. It is always better to accept your calling, your mandate on your life, and be content
aligned with your calling and serve your master and your Lord Jesus under the calling and the mandate that he has given you. So given what he knew, John also knew that there was a time limit to his ministry. His disciples were upset that people were going over to Jesus rather than coming to John. He did not allow this to disturb him. However, because he knew that Jesus' ministry must become greater than his ministry, must become less, John 3, 30, his disciples were jealous of Jesus for John, but John knew better. And people will come and peb you and try to put all these ideas into your mind. Oh, how we wish you would be the one who would be preaching every Sunday. How we wish that you would be chairing this committee. How we wish that you would be doing this and this. Please, don't listen to their voices. Understand your calling in that ministry. And do your best to always project the leader of that ministry and continue to serve under him. And when your time comes, God will elevate you and you will be surprised how many more God will bring your way to also serve under you. So just remember this. If your desire is to usurp and undermine the authority of your lead pastor that you will take over. You need to understand that a time will come in. Come. If you do succeed to even become a lead pastor, that somebody else under you would do the same thing to you. The very thing that you have done to undermine your lead pastor, <laughs> you will be paid back in your own coin. It does happen, and I, have, and I know examples of these where this has occurred. When you fail to remain within the boundaries of your calling and hurriedly wants to take over control, when your time is not up, you will be inviting disaster to your ministry. John was a true man of God. He knew that a person cannot do anything for God unless God sends the person and bestows the necessary spiritual gifts for the mission. It doesn't matter what a person thinks he should do for God. What matters is what God thinks a person should do for him. So you see, there are specific gifts that God gives with regards to your calling. Why? Because he equips those that he has called. And so there are certain gifts that he will give you in regards and in respect to your calling. You cannot convert the gifts of others for their specific callings. You ought to be content with the gifting that God has given you to your specific calling. John knew that, and he was not going to be envious of Jesus. He knew that Jesus' giftings as the Messiah was completely different from his gifting as the forerunner. And that is why he was content with his position. Church, we have a lot when it comes to infighting and succession plans and the rest. The church has a lot to learn from John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Don't allow people to say and pump things into your mind that will make you you try to undermine your superior and your boss. Always humbly serve, knowing that you are serving Christ under that situation. And don't allow anybody to rush you and force you to do things that will undermine your calling and your service under your lead pastor. This is huge. And this is applicable even in the secular world. A lot of us are out there and we are not seeing any progress in our job, secular works. Because why? We are just so proud to be submissive and work, give the company our total unadulterated devotion 
to the tax that we have been given and the position that we are in. We are aiming and looking at the next position and think that we are better off in that position. And so we undermine and do whatever we can to undermine the boss or our superior, lie and maneuver and try to pull that person down so we will take over the person's position. Believe me, even in the secular world, your deeds will find you out. And at the end of the day, the very things that you have done to get that position, somebody behind you will do the same thing to you to get rid of you in order to take that position. So um, there is no place for jealousy, envy, and covetousness about someone else's ministry in the kingdom. Like John, we should be satisfied with what God has given us to do for him. John's message to us today is this. Be you, be you and not somebody else. Be you and not somebody else. Just be you. Be at peace and happy with the special task and calling God has given you to just do to you in his kingdom. Just you. God has given that task to you. Just be you and do it to the glory of the Lord. And I think that this works so well and perfect even in secular uh, communities or secular job situations. Just be you. Do the work that you have been assigned with cheerfulness, and don't do anything to undermine your immediate superior. Just be you and do your job. And believe me, at the end of the day, you will have the peace of God in your heart and you will be blessed for being you and doing what you have been called to do. If the church should understand this, we will not have problems of secession. Handing over when one's time is up, because we all understand the timing of the Lord for our callings. And this is so critical in the body of Christ today, where positions are fought for. And sometimes it blows your mind to the length at which people will go just to undermine their superiors in order to take their positions. But when you humble yourself, and serve with all your heart, at the right time, God will lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up in due course. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast. Now, if you have listened to this podcast, and you are in a position and a situation where somebody is either undermining you, you know that this person wants your position and he's doing all that he can to destroy you. Please, I plead with you, don't return the person's acts with revenge. Sort out the potential of that person and try to encourage and improve that person in that area. When the person gets to realize that, you have no ill feeling about him and that you are seeking for his best, he will be ashamed and change his attitude towards you. Now, if you meet this challenge with the same anger and jealousy, guess what? That's what he's expecting from you. But if you do the opposite, rather than doing everything to prep him up and push him up, you will realize that his defenses will, be fo will fall. He will not be in the position to do those things he's doing to you anymore. And the Lord will take over the battle and fight it on your behalf. And if you are in a situation where you feel you are long overdue for that promotion, and somebody is intentionally sitting on it as a superior, doesn't want to see your wealth, please continue to humbly serve and submit the case to Jesus, you'll be surprised what the Lord can do for you when you continue to serve faithfully and humbly in the position that you are currently in.
if you do not know Jesus, sometimes it's going to be very difficult to do the very things that I've asked you to do. But if you do know Jesus and submit the situation into his hands, believe me, he'll give you the grace and the wisdom to be able to go through it to a point that you will be lifted up to the, that very position that you desire. So if you want to receive Jesus, pray with me, my Lord and Savior Jesus. Thank you for your word today. I have heard that you have a mandate for my life. And I want to fulfill that mandate, that destiny for my life. But I can't do it without you. Therefore, I invite you to come into my life. Cleanse me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. And accept me into your fold. And from today onwards, my life will not be the same. I believe that you are the Messiah. You died on the cross to set me free from my sins. And I confess you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for the salvation. And my days will never be the same. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Beloved, if you have prayed this prayer, I encourage you to find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered church to attend spirit-filled church, and let them know you have received Christ. And they will come around you and help you grow in the things of God. You can send me an inbox Facebook message or go to our website, www.authenticlife.com and click under devotionals. Under this devotion, you can pass your comment. This is place for comments. You can pass your comments and let us know you have received Christ and we will send you materials to help you grow in the things of God. Now, however, if you live in the Spotsylvania, Fredericksburg area, I invite you to our church, River of Life Church. We're starting a new series this Sunday. Please come. We are on the way on Route 1 towards Richmond on the right-hand side. River of Life is there. It's an open, Bible-believing, Christ-centered, spirit-filled church. You can come and live out the mandate of Christ for your life by serving in that church. Thank you and God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.